to clean your car, your driveway, uh, your vehicle up. And, uh, so thanks. Thanks for buying on the church. And uh, you know, for others, the logistics of needing to get things done, once again, I respect that. Uh, and I'll have to do what, what is necessary for putting, putting God first. Amen. And all of our things. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of 1 Thessalonians. In chapter number 4, I, I just want to, this morning, part of where my mind is, just to be up front, is to be able to give you some doctrine from the Word of God on a Sunday morning that will uh, hopefully uh, encourage you and challenge you. We need that from the Word of God. Uh, I think I think I need that in my life. I need encouragement, but I need challenge uh, as well. And so I think that that's where I'm at this morning as I, I look at the Word of God. And uh, I don't know if any of you were raised in church all your life, but but for me, my experience in being in church uh, was hearing about the rapture. And uh, as you heard about the rapture, you 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 thought it could be at any moment uh, the rapture of church. Uh, I mean, it could be today. Uh, it, 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 you, you didn't put it off into the, the near or the distant future, but you thought about it because the Word of God was so rich. So I, I want to talk a few moments about that word rapture. I want to talk to, uh, about the doctrine of that. I want to talk about what it means to us and how we live, how it should challenge us, but how it should encourage us as well. Uh, it's, a, it's a twofold uh, uh, doctrine in the Word of God. And so doctrine is anything that we know that the Word of God gives us that we build our life upon. It's the principles. It is God's commandment. It is the Word of God. And doctrine uh, 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 of the rapture isn't something Jesus just gave or something that was uh, reinforced through uh, the epistles that were written after Jesus ascended into heaven, but it was really something that was from the, the Old Testament and even the way that they buried people. Uh, I, I won't get there yet, but we'll talk about it uh, in a little bit. Uh, in in, in uh, Somerset County, uh, one of my goals is I want to get out there and see that that memorial as some folks have and have talked about how amazing as you hear the conversation that was there on that, that final flight. That final flight. Can I tell you that one day there's going to be a final flight for each one of us? And it is the rapture of the church. I hope I can bring some clarity to minds about what the rapture is. I hope I can bring it, bring it to life to you as we look at the rapture. In verse number 17, uh, Paul is write, writing to the, the, the church, the people of Thessal Thessalonica. And that's henceforth how the, 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 the epistle or the gospel of Thessalonians was written. Paul was writing to this church. And uh, so they're, they're, they remember an age-old doctrine, but yet they forget. Sometimes we're that way ourselves. We can remember something, but the clarity of all the details of it can be forgetful. And so Paul is reminding them that those who sleep in the faith... They're all hoping and looking for that day of rapture when God is going to take the church out of here. All those who've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, all those that's confessed Jesus as their Savior and lived their life in accordance to the Word of God in a place of prayer and that relationship with God. God is going to take us out of here. But it's almost like they forgot about those who died in the faith. They felt as though hope was gone, that, 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 that there there was no hope for them. Their hope of seeing the, the rapture was over. So Paul is, is clarifying to them. Uh, Paul is taking the cobwebs away. Paul is polishing up all those things that are there that, that has uh, just over time uh, uh, the ebb and flow of time has kind of uh, secluded them and, and the vision of it is not as 
clear as it once was. And so that is the purpose for Paul's gospel when he writes to those at, at Thessalonica. And he says to them, then we, uh, uh, well, let me jump up to verse number six. Uh, let me jump up to verse number 15. I wasn't intending to read that. But, but for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is doctrine. It's the doctrine of, of, of the rapture. It's not just something that Paul is saying. But it's something that he's reiterating. Something that's been said by God. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. All those who are believers, all those that bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, amen. Uh, uh, he, he says this, he, he says the coming of the Lord, uh, uh, which is the rapture, I'll give you more information in a moment, shall not prevent them which are asleep. That means those people who have died in Jesus Christ, they've had faith, they've had hope, they've lived their life according to the Word of God. They've asked Jesus to be their Savior, come into their life, they've made that confession of faith, and they continue to, to proceed in accordance to God's plan. He said, you're not going to prevent those which are asleep, uh, 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 those who die. He said, for the Lord himself shall ascend with, uh, from heaven with a shout. Amen. Uh, Jesus is who he's talking about. Remember in Acts chapter number 1, he said, Why stand ye here gazing into the heavens? That Jesus which was taken away from you, he will come again. That is the rapture. That is the second coming. Uh, the, the, the coming of the Lord. That is the rapture. The second coming of the Lord. He'll come all the way down to earth. So we use those terms, rapture and second coming. Amen. The second coming will be for those who believe in a, 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 a pre-tribulation rapture, which means seven years. And I don't want to get into a lot of great doctrine. I'll be glad to talk to you. And we can study and explain that uh, a little later. So there's going to be the rapture of the church. And then there's going to be a seven-year tribulation. It will be very hard, if at all possible, to get saved. Very difficult time. If you can't live for Christ while we have the message being preached, while we have the dispensation of grace, it would be very difficult in the seven years of following the rapture of the church and then Christ is coming back. And when He comes back, He's going to judge. All right? So, uh, 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 the, for the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and, and with the voice of the archangel. Now, this is probably most likely Michael. When we look at Scripture, we feel that, that, that we can confidently say that it's Michael when referring to such Scriptures as, as Jude in verse number 9. And with, the trump, uh, uh, and with the trump of God. Now, we automatically think it's going to be this trumpet. Ba -ba -ba -ba! But we don't know for sure exactly what it is. Uh, uh, but, but whatever it is, this indicator is going to be from God and of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. So the criteria for being ready for the rapture is to be in Christ. The dead in Christ, the Bible says, they died with a knowledge of Jesus Christ, a love and a faith and a hope that only God can give. And so they died in Him. And so the Bible says that these which have died in Christ, they're going to be uh, uh, resurrected from the grave. Amen. They're going to come up from the grave. And the Bible goes on down to say, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Now, if you ever go to your uh, concordance and you look up the word rapture, you're not going to find it. Rapture is not a word that is used in the Bible. Uh, it's not a word that is used in, 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 in the King James, uh, but, but the word caught up is. And so we use the, the, that, that ideology of being caught up, that fact, that doctrine, we give it a name or title. We call it rapture, which is an interpretation caught up. Uh, in, in, in our English language, it's made up of Greek and Hebrew and Latin and lots of other language. And that's where we get the word rapture at. It's not contradictory of the word of God. It's just simply indicative of the word caught up. And so uh, here it is. Uh, also, the word trinity, which we know as a tripart nature of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. 
Trinity is a word we give it. You won't find that in the Bible. In fact, try to look for the word Bible in the Bible. You won't find it. You'll find it is the word of God or scriptures. Bible is the name that we give it. So it's not that we're diminishing, we're taking away, or we're adding. It's just simply indicative of the way that we describe it. And so the Bible says, and the, and, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So when the Lord comes, uh, comes at the rapture, He is not coming to earth. In fact, if you want to get very technical about this, you'll find the word heaven, uh, heaven the, when it's used in the Bible, if you go to the original context, there are different words for the heaven, meaning different atmospheres or different heights. Uh, in this atmosphere that is referred to here from, from the memory bank from the Bible College, which is a lot of years ago, is about 6,000 feet above the ground, and, and that's, that is the first heaven. He's going to come back. He's going to be seen. Uh, he's going to, uh, those who die in Christ, the graveyard is going to give up their bodies, and then we which are alive and remain in Christ shall be caught up together in the air. I was just thinking this morning as my wife was singing, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Do you know what? For me, that will be a day where for my dad, I'll introduce him to his granddaughters. What a day that's going to be. Amen. How awesome. Sister Rachel, you're going to introduce your mom and dad to, uh, to, to your children. Uh, particularly your mom didn't know any. Did your dad know any? So he knew some, but some he didn't know. And so uh, how awesome of a thought to think about. And all of you have your stories. What a day that's going to be. Think about the rapture. How wonderful it's going to be. And so, Brother uh, David, you talk about Brother Buddy, who was your teacher at Bible college. You're going to introduce him to folks along your journey of ministry who you've met. What a day that's going to be. And Sister Jenny, your mom, amen, to, to be able to experience that. How awesome for all of us. Of us. Amen. That day when we were all caught up. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Those who died in faith are so precious and important to us, and we're going to see them in the air to, forever to be uh, with the Lord. And the Bible says, goes on down to say, eh, 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 wherefore comfort one another with these words. Amen. Be a comfort one another to these words words. I want you to think about this scenario. There's coming a day when there's going to be someone pushing a buggy in Walmart. There's going to be someone, a surgeon who is doing a surgery at Harrisburg Hospital. There's going to be someone driving down 209. Think about this. Uh, uh, and, 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 and the Lord is going to give that shout, that buggy that's being pushed in Walmart's going to run into a display because no one's there pushing it anymore. That surgery that's taken place, the surgeon has left, but he didn't use the door. Amen. There's a car that's driving down 209 that's going to veer off of the highway because the driver of that vehicle is no longer in there driving because they've been caught up in the air with the Lord to ever be with the Lord. Amen. How amazing for us to think about that rapture that is so very, very real. Amen. And like I said, uh, this is the promise that, 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 that Paul was given because Jesus, he said this, he said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That is the promise of the rapture. Amen. We need to live life like it can happen today. Amen. If not today, tomorrow. Amen. It needs to be on the forefront of our hope and our longing. Amen. That Jesus is coming back. Amen. I think life would be lived so differently if the rapture were in front of us instead of pushed back to the near or the distant, most, the very distant future. 
In the book of, of Job, I've said it so often, that first book that was ever written, Job talks about, he said, if my body be des uh, destroyed by worms, one day I know that I'm going to see my Savior in this body. It, I'm not against cremation, but I'm going to say something. If you, if you, uh, if you look back in earlier times when cremation was started, it was started by a lot of different pagan culture. That doesn't mean it's wrong to do. Once again, that will be your choice. I'm not, I'm not condemning creation, a cremation in any way. I'm simply trying to validate a point. And pagan, and that was pagan practice. But for the Christians, they would gather up everything that they could find. They would gather up every part of the body if something would happen, that there would be a dismemberment. They would gather it all up because to them, they knew that there was a hope of a resurrection. And they felt as if they needed to keep it all together for God to, to, to resurrect that body. Well, let me tell you what. If there's coming a resurrection day where God is going to bring a body back together that is in lots of different directions and lots of different places. God doesn't need us to manipulate take care of things. But that was their tradition. Amen. And so we have to know this. Amen. That we give ourselves the comfort uh, of knowing that, that God is going to show us a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump when the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible. Amen. We have to know that this is a this idea of rapture and resurrection isn't something new. But Clement said it in 96. Let us every hour expect the kingdom of God. We know not the day. In, in, in AD uh, 108, uh, 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 Polycarp, who was John's successor, he said this. He said, He will raise us from the dead when uh, uh, we shall reign with him. And then Agninus, who was a follower of Simon Peter, he said, Consider the times and expect him. I know that we've heard the story a long time. Amen. We've heard the truth. It is doctrine. But we can't because it hasn't happened yet. Let it slip to the wayside. Jesus is coming. One of my things made some differences, and even 50 years ago, and the way people viewed the rapture until nowadays. Have you noticed technology has greatly changed in the way that we entertain <coughs> ourselves? I mean, look at a cartoon made from, you know, when I was a child. Versus the cartoons now, the graphics are unbelievably amazing. Probably the criteria and the wholesomeness of it from when I was a child was much better. Not that there wasn't things then, but the thing that's changed is the graphics and the way that society entertains themselves. They've entertained themselves so far away that they've lost the mystery and the marvel, and the revelation. Revelation, sorry. Of the return of Jesus Christ. I want to ask you, when's the last time that you thought about the rapture? The taking away of the church? It's going to happen quickly. Have you ever thought about this? When we talk about quickly, have you ever thought about how quick the celestial things happened in the Bible? You look at Enoch, and Enoch in the Bible, he walked with God, and he was not for, 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 for he just walked home with God. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. You ever look at Isaiah chapter number 6, where Isaiah, in the year that King Uzziah died, he was going through grief, he was going through change. But the Word of God says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I, I, I saw the Lord high in the a, a moment he was there, it happened. Any of you ever have something like that happen to you? Maybe you're driving down the road and all of a sudden, uh, there's a deer pops out in front of you. I had that. And, and all, there's nothing you can do. That's the moment that the rapture will take place. There won't be time for repentance. There won't be time for I'm sorry. There won't be time to change the, the, the intentions of how we live. But in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, 
and the, and the Word of God uh, says that we shall be changed in that moment. There's not going to be any warning. Christ is coming back. We've got to be ready. What are those things that we harbor in our heart? Maybe feelings against someone. Amen. I believe this. I know sometimes things can be a process. But let me tell you what will hasten the process of our feelings and our processing and our getting to where we need to be. If we really looked at the imminent and soon return of Jesus Christ, it would help us hasten the idea that I need to be ready, that I need to have things right with God. I need to have things right with others because Jesus is coming. The doctrine of rapture. Jesus is coming. Every hour we should be expecting Jesus Christ. If Sister Molly would come to the piano. In a world that has been influenced by the Left Behind series. Entertained by it, but not moved by it. But moving beyond entertainment, we grab hold of the doctrine of God's word. He's coming, and we've got to be ready. Amen. The rapture is going to happen soon. Philippians four five. The Lord is near. James chapter number five. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. For the coming of the Lord is at hand. Behold, the judge is standing right at the door. In Revelation, he said it repeatedly. Behold, I come quickly. How fast is fast in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye? Think about how quick the twinkling of an eye is. It happens so quickly you don't even realize it. But in that twinkling, the blink of an eye, he's coming. He's coming. And we've got to be ready. Sister, I think you told me something Tuesday. You know, it's interesting. We hear about bad weather coming. Walmart is packed. Yesterday morning, I had to run to the post office and I had some errands to run quickly uh, before uh, my class. And so I walked into Warriors. Do you know there was not one shopping cart? No, Josh, there wasn't even a basket. Good thing I only needed bananas, which I've forgotten, got some other stuff. <laughs> I'll blame it on the shopping carts, right? But everybody prepares for those things. And most, not most, but oftentimes it can be wrong. But I'm telling you, eternity is not the best way to be wrong. Jesus is coming back. And we've got to be ready. He's coming. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. I feel like. I don't want to be a Paul, and I want to polish up the doctrine of the rapture. Don't lose sight, my friend, he's coming. It's a hope that I long to. All of us have buried friends in the Recorded Bible Church. Well, then most of us have buried family. So, the last moment that we view our loved one, the casket closes. But the door of hope opens in our heart because we know that this is not the end. But somehow, some way, in the processing of the human mind, we put death away until, you know, maybe our midlife, we think about taking care of our family. But until the golden years where we know that it is. But even then, I've watched the years as folks push it away. It's not yet. It's not about death. It's about the coming of the Lord that we need to prepare for. And so this morning, I 
challenge you. Are you ready? Are you expecting? Are you living life waiting? If not, this morning is the time to polish up the doctrine of the rapture and put it on display in your life because Jesus is coming. I may not see you again in another church service. We may be caught together in the air because Jesus is coming soon. Would you gather in and make your whole kind of election sure this morning? Jesus is coming.